What an honor. Uh, this, this is uh, incredible for me. And yes, I did bypass UCSD uh, on my journey, but, but I, I would say that UCSD was probably the first university that um, I stood on uh, in terms of recognizing the importance of education. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. I, you know, I, I have some talking points, but I, I may go off script. Uh, I'm just feeling the room, so I may go there. As the superintendent of the San Diego Unified School District, and yes, uh, it is certainly known as the second largest in California and the eighth or ninth largest in the nation, uh, but for me, it's home. Uh, for me, uh, that's what this represents. It's, it's about community, it's about family, uh, it's about San Diego at the heart. And for me, growing up in San Diego, it is an honor to represent what we are about. Uh, and that is recognizing that we need to be full of love, full of our soul, and strengthening our minds uh, for future generations. So I didn't plan to do this, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my journey uh, because I think it's important. I am firm on a belief that this is about value, this is about vision, this is about voice, and more importantly, I think it's about fear. And it's about leaning into fear and to recognize all things are possible. And this is proof that it is possible. Uh, this is about having a core value about the community and the connections with the community. This is about having a clear vision about access. This is, this is what this represents in the heart of downtown San Diego. Uh, in the San Diego Unified District, we are firm on the fact that we believe in equity, we believe in diversity, and we believe in inclusion, and we are not apologetic about that. And I'm not gonna be apologetic about speaking about that because we have not always opened the door and we have not always welcomed uh, students of color, black and brown children, and those who are most marginalized, those who come from other countries who don't speak English as a first language, students with uh, educational plans. We have not um, been open to that. And I'm not going to apologize because I am a product of what is possible. I grew up here in Southeast San Diego, just, I guess I would call it 16 blocks, just east. And I was raised by my grandmother and I didn't plan to share this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a little bit. Uh, my parents divorced, birth mom is white, my father is black. And in the 60s, that wasn't a real popular relationship. And they had children very early on, my older brother, and they went to Snyder. And if anyone's around, Snyder is off the 94 where you may know Gompers resides. Well, that was Snyder, and that was an alternative school. And they went to the alternative school, but they both dropped out. So I am a product of two high school dropouts. But always reading. My dad always read the trashy novels. He, he was getting down with those. Um, other than the trashy novels and the, the encyclopedias, I didn't really have a lot of books in the home. But I knew education was important, so, so hold on to that. You know, growing up here, I was a little bit too dark to be white. And I was a little too light to be black. 
And I'm not sure if others have the same experience, but I didn't fit. Parents were divorced. We didn't have a lot of money. Uh, I knew education was important because they emphasized that. But I spent 44 years of my life not knowing who I was. And that is not something we want for our children. We don't want that. That's not why we're here. In high school, um, I realized that I was different and I was treated differently. But educators saw me and saw the potential. And that was critical. That was critical. And it was so critical that the next five years of my life between 18 and, and 23, educators and, and education was um, what saved my life. And I'll tell you this. A young lady named Ira Henderson, beautiful teacher. When my grandmother passed away in 1988, she, my grandmother was everything. She was my everything. She raised me. She passed away. She, she died of cancer. And Ira Henderson showed up at the church, at the funeral service, and just put her arm around me. Little would I know that Ira Henderson would become my mother, someone that I could count on, that I didn't have growing up other than my grandmother. Education is critical, and teachers and what we're about is so important and can save lives. In 89, a year later, my best friend uh, committed a triple murder. He's on death row in San Quentin. Two other best friends, they've spent a combined 20 years in prison. After that, my sister was shot and killed by one of my students. A year after that, one of my favorite teachers, Don Thorpe, passed away of AIDS. A young man that cared so much about us and yet couldn't fully be who he was because of our society and the lack of education and ignorance. And a year later, I lost my father at 44 years old. Why am I here today? That's crazy. And so I feel a deep spirit to commit to diversity, to commit to equity, to commit to inclusion, and to commit to our community and our partnership. And that's why I'm here. I talk about my dad. It's, it's interesting because my dad worked at UCSD. And here's the interesting thing. I actually didn't want to become an educator. I don't even know if I wanted to go to college, but I did want to go to UCSD because I wanted to do the work my dad did. My dad worked in the mail room. But I tell you what, he loved his job. He loved the people he worked with. And he loved the people he worked for. I was going to go to UCSD. And I was going to deliver mail. And I was going to drive around in that little golf cart. And I don't know. The good thing is he's not here. The bad thing is he's not here. But no one can hold him accountable because I would often go with him and ride around in that golf cart <laughs> and deliver mail and sort mail. And I actually thought I was going to be a postal worker. And, and the reason I tell this story is because we as adults have a great level of influence over young people. And we may not even realize it. So I was actually planning to go to UCSD and I guess there were other plans for me. So that's why I bypassed UCSD. But I was there as a young kid. 
and I was gonna be a, a mail carrier, but I guess uh, maybe I'll deliver mail one day. Maybe you can get me out there and I'll drive around the cart and deliver mail. I would love that. So all of that to say, my journey has really, about, uh, really been about connectedness and the connectedness that we have to our community, to our families, and this building and what UCSD is doing um, is connected there. And as I said, um, this is really about us valuing education for every single human being. And we're not gonna wait for them to come to us as we have in the past. We're gonna go to the community and we're gonna connect with our families. And that is inspiring. That is inspiring. When we went into COVID and, and um, it's been a very challenging time, UCSD has been an incredible partner for San Diego Unified. From a science perspective and a medical uh, perspective, we could not have kept our students in school for not with the help of UCSD, period. Put that on a quote and a book. Our kids benefited because of UCSD and the partnership and the connection. Our students benefited from being able to connect to school while they were at home. And we were able to distribute uh, technology to them. We were doing things that we never thought was possible. And yet our children, many of whom are the most marginalized, had access to education, which as I am living proof, can change the trajectory for generations to come. I was the first to go to college. And I guarantee you both of my kids are going to college. One's already in college, may end up at UCSD, got accepted to UCSD, chose to go to Mesa, he's gonna be a physician assistant, and he'll probably go to UCSD, but maybe not. There's a couple others. And my younger son is uh, on a full scholarship to sing opera, believe it or not. Uh, I didn't choose that. Bill, you're here. I chose basketball. <laughs> he chose something else, and thank goodness, uh, I listened, and I got out of the way. Our job is to create opportunities, create space for people to be amazing. And that's what UCSD has done. And they, they did it for my father, who made $14,000 a year and loved UCSD, loved UCSD, because they created a space for him to be amazing at what he chose to do. And that's what we need to continue to be about. And um, if you don't believe it, if you doubt it, just remember my story because there is no way, I'm gonna change my word, in heck, that I should be standing here today. There's no way. The odds were stacked so much against me. And yet, with your heart, with your soul, with your mind, please hang in there with us and be committed because it is possible. It is certainly possible. And the beautiful thing is, is it did cost a lot of money to, for my dad to get from Southeast San Diego to UCSD to work. And because of that, he wasn't always able to get to my schools in Claremont and be an active participant in my career as a young person. And I needed teachers. But with this facility, we have access now. It's on, I mean, look at the trolley, the rail system now, the buildings here, right? This is the hub of our community. And what you all are investing in uh, warms my heart. 
And as a partner, you have a partner in me. Um, we believe that our students should have access to rigorous coursework and advanced studies. We believe in that. And we often say we don't have enough money to provide that. And now we have a partner in UCSD where students can actually um, coexist in public schools as well as a university. And, and whether it's community college or a university, our students have access right here. They, I used to ride my bike down to Seaport Village. I could ride my bike here to this facility, right? There's no excuse now. They can get exercise, education, get away from the house for a little while, um, but that's up to them. Our job is to be committed and, and have a strong conviction about preparing students for college and career of their choice. It's not our job to decide that and say, yes, you can, and no, you're not. Our job is to say, yes, we're gonna make this available for all of you. And that vision from uh, Dr. Kosla to all of you um, is, is incredible. And, and I'm looking forward to that partnership. So I'm gonna go back on script because they're gonna show me a sign in just a little bit. Um, I, I do wanna mention this before I, I wrap up is um, I, I am a little saddened and a little jealous because UCSD took a little bit of my joy. And uh, here's why. Uh, we have a new chief of staff, Enrique Raucho, and I was taking him around San Diego. He's from LA, don't, don't get mad at him. Um, and he spent a lot of time in Sa Sacramento and now he's joining us here in San Diego. But we were driving around, I took him up to the Logan Memorial Educational Complex if you have not been up there uh, off of 28th and National Ocean View. Amazing complex, prenatal to 12th grade. And I took him by Perkins, uh, K-8, and I had this crazy thought about how do we expand uh, the School of Creative and Performing Arts uh, and bring the tapestry of San Diego to downtown? And if you don't know the School of Creative and Performing Arts, uh, a few years ago we had three students who got into Juilliard. We have one Juilliard finalist. We have um, many, many talented folks um, who come out of the school, San Diego School of Creative and Performing Arts. And Tim Farson, I give him a little bit of credit because we did this together. <laughs> we actually want a campus downtown. And can you imagine us and as a partner uh, and a school that focus on academics and the arts that will take center stage, connect it to downtown San Diego and the arts and music, uh, dance, uh, theater, right here. And so when I heard about this, I was like, man, they got us again. They were too fast. Uh, you all are, are kind of like the light rails, much faster than us. Um, but I can tell you this, I'm not going to uh, give that hope up and that vision up because I think it's possible. And why I think it's possible is because of what you're doing here in this facility. Uh, when you have strong values about what we want for our children and we have a clear vision about that and we voice it, it comes true. I believe that. And so don't be surprised if San Diego Unified is exploding through the arts uh, here locally with you in downtown. And I think San Diego High is amazing and we have a, a, a lease, 99 year lease with the city and Perkins is great, but can you imagine a center for the students in the arts in Barrio Logan, in downtown San Diego with uh, mariachis, world famous mariachis, right? Like the spirit of San Diego and the culture uh, and, the, and the different ethnicities and the languages, um, international, it, it, it can be amazing. Um, and so I'm gonna look for UCSD to be a partner in that as well. 
uh, and I will commit our partnership to make sure that our students um, have the most rigorous experiences in San Diego, uh, where we can then send them to UCSD and they can continue that education. And I wanna thank uh, Dr. Kosla because we had three schools, uh, Lincoln, Morris, and Hoover, uh, part of the President's Scholars Program. And uh, this year we extended it to San Diego High and to Crawford, and we had 40 uh, President Scholars. Uh, those who were eligible from those schools that uh, got in uh, received scholarships. Uh, and we are so thankful uh, our students are brilliant. They're amazing. Um, we, we need to get better. I'm not, gonna, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not gonna stand here and tell you we don't, but we are going to get better um, because our students need uh, access um, and they need to be brilliant. So one day, uh, they can be standing on this stage and they can be uh, creating experiences for other generations to come. And so I'm, I'm just so thankful. If I didn't cover everything, um, I'm happy to answer questions, but I, I, I just shifted a little bit to tell you a little bit about my story, um, to continue um, on that path of hope and possibility. Um, and I think it's important to, to share that story with you uh, because um, when you wonder about your investment, whether it's physical, whether it's financial, um, whether it's through your job, uh, you're not always told that you're amazing. You're not always told that you make a difference. You made a difference. And if I can make a difference, then you've made a difference in multiple lives. And I thank you for that.